us, O God, but unto your great name. We celebrate your mighty hands. We have come to return praise unto you. Lord, thank you. Receive our praises. Receive our praises in the name of Jesus. Visit us again with your word this morning. Let your spirit speak unto us in the name of Jesus. Let there be a touch behind the word. We vow to give it back all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Let the saints of God shout the Lord as amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. I welcome you to God's presence again. This very special Shiloh 2020 Thanksgiving service. And all that we have come to do this morning is to give God quality thanks for all that he has done. And as we prepare to sing and dance, if you didn't come here to dance, and when it is time, you can excuse yourself and go back home. Praise the name of the Lord. But I'm sure there is no anybody like that here this morning. All that we have come to do is to celebrate the goodness of our God. Whatever you celebrate is what you attract. Those who celebrate good things, they attract more of it. Those who celebrate testimony, they attract more of it. Those who celebrate the act of God, they never cease seeing the act of God in their lives. That's what we have come to do. To celebrate the act of God. To consciously and meticulously give him back all the glory. Acknowledging him as the doer of every good thing that happened in Shiloh 2020. Hallelujah. But as we get set to do that in Thanksgiving, which is going to be serious dance and celebration, what you have just done now is just warming up. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, when a footballer goes to the field to play, he doesn't go straight to, to the match. He just first of all warms up, throws his leg, throws his hand, and does like this. To send a signal to the leg that they're ready to play. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's what you have just done now. Sending signal to all parts of your body that be ready to twist yourself very soon. Praise the name of the Lord. Before we get into that time of celebrations unto our God, let's charge ourselves up very briefly with God's word. And we're looking at what are we thanking God for as a commission? What are we thanking God for as a commission? Malachi chapter 2 and verses 1 to 2. And now, O ye priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not lay, if you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, see as the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. Say, God forbid. He says, Yea, I have caused your blessings. Yea, I have caused them already, because you do not lay it to heart allow him to cause our blessings. We won't. This commandment is for you. When it comes to the subject of thanksgiving, it's not an admonition. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. A commandment means you don't have option. Your opinion is not sought for. It's a commandment. It's a law. It's not an admonition. Say, law, which means if you don't want to live under causes, this is what you must do. If you will not lay it on how to give me thanks, you can't stop me from causing your blessing. So it's a commandment. This commandment is for you. This commandment is for you. This commandment is for you. You must take it seriously. You must take it seriously. That's why we have returned. If you will not lay it, if you will not hear, if you will not lay it to heart, so it's not something that you keep carelessly. It is an instruction that you keep at your heart. You guard it. It must be foremost in your heart. Don't keep it in your head so that you don't forget. Let it be in your heart. That is to tell you how important it is. Put it to heart. Don't even be reminded. Don't wait to be reminded. 
No. Lay it in heart. It's something that you must do consciously. Something that must be foremost in your heart. If you don't want to forget certain things, you write some things and place it by your bedside because you know every day you must sleep. So the moment you come, you see that thing. That's how it is. Place it in the, in the conspicuous part of your heart so that you know it's a very, very crucial thing. To give glory unto my name. See, there's a lot of hosts. I will even send the calls upon you. I will cost your blessings. Just why? Because you do not lay it on heart. The easiest way to provoke God is by forgetting to give him thanks for the things he has done. In Psalm 28 and verse 5, hear what he says. Psalm 28 and verse 5. He said, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the oppression of his hands, he will destroy them and not build them up. Because they regard not the work of the Lord. You see, it's very terrible. Sometimes when God does something for you to commonize it, somebody has come, uh, and say, you know, I've been feeling pain in my waist or at my back for the past two days. But as well, you know, after that prophetic war from Shiloh, as God someone was, you know, blessing us, the thing disappeared. Now I am healed. And somebody said, I think it's in a testimony in one conscious. Eh? It is in a testimony for example, back eh? I beg, make we hear what? That same backache has killed people. Killed people. Is it because they regard not the works of my hand? They regard not. When you hear any testimony, celebrate it with your heart. God is watching what is passing on your heart to determine your own testimony. Determine your own testimony. When you hear, you celebrate the act of God. You and I cannot, cannot heal an ant. So if God has taught anybody in any form, please celebrate it. Don't let Satan carry away your heart because you are, you are, you are provoking certain things. If they regard not the works of my hand, I will destroy them. Not the oppression of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Nothing brings destruction like that. Nothing brings this destruction like that. I've had, I've had, you know, incidences before. Somebody had Wicklow, you know Wicklow, in the hand and died. Wicklow, finger. And here you are when you are cutting your vegetable and so hungry to quickly slice your salad and this thing to eat, you cut your finger, you, you knife. And miraculously, God touched it. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't commonize every, any testimony. Because they regarded not the work of his eyes. He said, I will destroy them. God won't destroy any one of us. That's why we are returning as a commission all over. What we are doing now is what is going on all over the globe where you find our church. is a law. Praise the name of the Lord. Everybody is dancing and celebrating the act of God in this Shiloh, in all our churches today. So if people are dancing and when it is time for us to celebrate, you are not dancing. You are the only one not dancing in the whole world. You are the only one. Praise the name of the Lord. Because everybody is dancing. Even the children are dancing everywhere. Everybody. So in case you came here not to celebrate, you better change your mind. Praise the Lord. Why are we thanking him as a commission? For the diverse fulfillment of prophecies by the raw hand of God. Diverse fulfillment of prophecies by the raw hand of God. Before our eyes, we are seeing God fulfill everything that he has spoken to his servant, one after the other. Many years ago, precisely in 1982, God said to his servant, the word from this altar will be transmitted. Life 
through the screen across the nations of the world, then there was no technology. There was nothing like that. And now, we have seen that happen in life in increasing dimensions all through the years. Specifically, at Shiloh 2020, people from 170 nations we are connected to this prophetic event. 170 nations. 170 nations. We are connected. I didn't say 17. I didn't say 17 villages. 170, 170 nations of the world. What is remaining? So Shiloh has become a global event. Global event. Global event. As we are now, that's what is going all around. Connected to Shiloh. Connected to Shiloh. As a fulfillment of the word that God has spoken to his servants. How do you know a true prophet? In Deuteronomy chapter 18, and verses 21 to 22, he said, And if thou say in your heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, of course you don't need any other person to tell you, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord had not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Whatever a prophet said, and it doesn't come to pass, of course you know he has spoken from his own flesh. But when a prophet speaks and you see it come to pass, then you know that is a prophet. Everything that God's servant has told us, that God said unto him, one after another, we have seen all come to pass to show that indeed God has called him, indeed it was God that spake to him. Praise the name of the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 15, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who spake with his mouth unto David, my father, and had with his hands fulfilled it. He speaks, whenever God speaks it with his mouth, he fulfills it with his hands. If not, how can you think that in this season, so called pandemic as it were, we, we experience the best Shiloh ever? The best Shiloh ever. If, we are not, if you are not blind, which I know nobody is, you will have asserted that from what happened here. Praise the name of the Lord. To show that God is God by himself. He doesn't need the help of any man. And in any situation, in any circumstance, God still remains God. Climate cannot move him. Loss of the land cannot move him. Nothing because he's God, the maker and the creator of all. Praise the name of the Lord. To show that he said it. Hallelujah. Also, a prophetic word came forth saying that we shall soon see millions gathering to hear the word. Millions. That's one of the things God spoke to his servant. Millions shall be gathering to hear the word. As of today, several millions have gathered in diverse places connected to the connected to Shiloh 2020 through various social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, etc., and many TV networks such as DSTV and others to the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know how many people gather. So many people gathered behind their TV sets with neighbors who may even be Muslims. You think it's only you that knows Shiloh? Imam knows Shiloh. And they join Shiloh. Some top Muslim leaders in the nations, some time ago, following Shiloh. Some of them call Papa. So it has become a global event. Global event. Millions. Gather to in fulfillment of what God has spoken. And physical attendance data shows massive increase over last year's Shiloh across all our various 
viewing centers all across our village. People are massively gathered. Gathered down into the villages. Down into the villages. We have various viewing, you know, centers. You know, just within Delta State, for instance, we have various viewing centers. Even among those new, new churches planted, people gathered there massively. Villages, people from those villages gathered. The church has suddenly sub subdued the land. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why we are returning to give him all the glory. Because even what we are seeing is surprising. God has done much more than we can ever think as a commission. Praise the name of the Lord. Why are we thanking him as a commission? Stronger waves of signs, wonders, diverse miracles were recorded this year above what we had at previous Shiloh events. Diverse signs and wonders. We have just read to all some instant testimonies. Every day we hear in our center here, we recorded instant testimonies. Instant testimony. 93, 146, 125. You know, like that. Instant testimonies of the hand and of the touch of God. One of those testimonies, a, a small you know, child was brought here unconscious, gone. And then the mother said, no, just like you had in that testimony when this mother was saying, bring the child to Shiloh ground. Also, this woman said, no, I'm not taking her to hospital. Shiloh is on. Brought that child unconscious to this Shiloh ground here in this center. Unconscious. Stood with the God of Shiloh. And then the next day, the small girl came back to life on this center. Praise the name of the Lord. A testimony was placed on my table yesterday of a young man who came, already tested HIV positive over the years, and then spoke to God, Lord, this Shiloh, I want to be free. Enough is enough. And stayed with God on this Shiloh ground. After one of the sessions, he rushed back. When he had a conviction in his heart that something has happened, rushed back, went for a test. Behold, HIV negative. I have that testimony on my table with the medical report attached to it on this ground. Shouldn't we go back to him and give him all the glory? With the diverse testimonies, including your own testimonies. That's why we have come to give him qualitative thanksgiving. Because he has done all things well. Hallelujah. For instance, there are 446 instant miracles at Faith Tabernacle at the impartation service yesterday. And then three dead bodies in the womb jacked back to life at the instance of the man too. Many more of such testimonies that we cannot recall because of time. We cannot begin to say because of time. That's why we have consciously come back as a commission to thank him because he has done much more than we can think or imagine. One of the word, prophetic word that was given to God's servant this year for, for the church is that this year 10,000 churches, new churches shall be planted across the nation. That word looks like something that is impossible when it was said because of the prevailing situations. People are locking down. You want to expand? How? Praise the name of the Lord. How? How? Even the people that are already in church, that are bona fide members, we are finding it difficult to bring them back to church. You want to go and talk of opening up new churches. Some people up to now, they have no reason for COVID holiday. Praise the name of the Lord. So, to be talking about opening new churches was like a, an impossible task humanly. But because it was God that said it, not your hand or my hand that will do it, he will do it with his hands. And behold, by November, already 10,404 churches were already planted. If those hands are yours, I thought you would clap more for Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. God is a human of God. For he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can think or ask. All that you can think or ask. He will not only do it, he will put extra on it. 
That's what we call Jara. You know what Jara is? You know what Jara is? Is it an Urubu word? What language is that? You don't know, but you know what they mean. It's an outside language. Praise the name of the Lord. You go to the market. After you give them money, they give you the measure you want. Maybe for Gary, you are buying. And you say, Malam, give me some Jara now. The man will take small and add to it. That's what we call Jara. Praise the name of the Lord. So God didn't just do it. He did it and put Jara on top. He's a God of Jara. Praise the name of the Lord. Which is scriptural. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, he said, unto him, unto him, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we have asked or think. That's Geram. According to the power that is at work in us, God did it. Why would we do it prison? And our mission to the world Outside Nigeria, we had over 800 churches planted across the 35 nations. God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be praised. And that's why we have returned as a commission. We do not take his blessings for granted. If you don't want to be grounded in life, never take his blessings for granted. Don't take God's blessing for granted. Any kind of action that wants to make you pose as if it, is, it was what you did that make it happen, it will reverse the blessings. It will reverse the blessings. So that's why we have returned to give him thanks. Why must we give him thanks? Number one, because it is a debt that we owe. It's a debt. It's a debt. Is a debt. Is a debt. We must pay back our debt. It's a debt. In Luke chapter 17 and verses 17 to 19, Jesus answering them said, Where are they not ten levers? Where are the nine? Where are the nine? They are not found that will return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. They were not found to return, to return, to return, to return. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you whole. They didn't return. You know, when you go to borrow, you tell the person, Please give me this money, I will come back. I will bring it back. So, any good thing that God has done for man, it is a debt. We owe him that thanks. It's a debt that we must pay. It's a debt. That's why Jesus said, when that leper, that one leper, when he saw that he was healed, I'm sure the first thing that will have come to his mind is, hey, where would I find Jesus now to tell him this thing? And I don't know his house. Where will I find him? I said, anyway, let me just, let me start going. Let me at least run. Maybe I will meet him before he gets home. And maybe when I get to the environment, I may ask, please, does anybody know the house of this Jesus? Or something that must have been that may have been what was running in his mind, but I'm sure the leper was surprised as he turned and ran. Suddenly, he just saw Jesus the same place where he touched him. That's what happens whenever God touches you in any area and gives you a breakthrough, a miracle. He's waiting for you there. It's like he said, I'm here, I'm waiting for you. He's waiting. He's expecting you to return. To return. Before he determines the next thing to do. Either to withdraw the blessings or to perfect it. So it's a debt. Please understand that any good thing that God has done for you in your life, you owe him thanks. You must pay that debt if you don't want that blessing to be reversed. You must pay that debt. You must pay that debt. When God is just like a small, you know, you know, the way we treat small children. You have a pack of sweets, and then you remove one or two and give to the child. Originally, what you have in mind is the whole pack, but you remove only two and give to the child and watch the attitude of the child. 
And the child gives, thank you, and leaves. And the next day, he wakes up. Oh, mommy, thank you for the sweet you gave me yesterday. Then your mind will say, yes. Now I can give you the rating. And then you carry the bag and give him. That's how God treats us. You know, there's an a local, local adage that says, the child that knows how to thank for yesterday will receive more. The reason why many people don't receive more is because they don't return back to tell God thanks. I want you to know that anytime God blesses you, that's not the ultimate. It's just the shadow of the real thing. Anytime any good thing happens to you, that's just the beginning. That's not the ultimate. God is waiting to determine whether you are qualified for the real thing. So it's a debt that we owe. It's a debt that we owe. Why do we give thanks? Number two, to preserve our blessings. To preserve our blessings. Malachi 2, 1 to 3. Oh, you priest. If you will not hear, if you will not lay it in heart to give me thanks, he says, I will cause your blessings. I will cause your blessings. So when you give God thanks, you, he preserves the blessings for you. The blessing, the blessing is preserved. You've often heard it say on this altar that testimony not shared is testimony lost. The easiest way to lost a testimony, to lose a testimony, is not sharing it. It's not sharing it. And then most of the times the devil will walk on our mind not to share the testimony. At times, Satan will say, about this, which, what do you want to go and share? This small testimony. Wait until one big thing happens. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes the devil will give you all manners of reason. He said, how do you go on that order to go and share testimony? This testimony is, is good, oh, but you that you are always shy. When you get to that altar, people's eyes will not come on you like this. But you can even fall down. You, he can even be giving you his own experience. Say, you know me, I don't share testimony, but one day, when pastor just talk, 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 my heart just moved. As I got there, as I don't get there, I see people, I don't forget what I want to say. <laughs> Just to, Satan will do everything to want to stop you from saying that good thing. You see, God is excited when you say and publicize his act. Now, if you don't understand, how do you feel in your human form? Anytime somebody says anything good about you, how do you feel? Even when you say, don't mention it's a lie. It's a lie. One day, there was a little problem between, you know, a couple, husband and wife, and the woman was angry, angry, you know, boiling and all that. And when they came to narrate what happened, and the woman was talking and talking and talking. She said, Pastor, my problem is my husband. No matter what you do, he will never, never appreciate it. He will never appreciate it. That's my problem. He will never appreciate it. He will just be looking at you. And now you'll be doing. Ah. The man said, What did you do that I didn't appreciate? He said, What of that time? What of this one? The husband now said, But I used to tell you this thing before. You are the one who say anytime when I tell you, you say, Please, Don't mention. He said, I used to tell you, you said, don't mention. He said, mention, mention it, be mentioning it. Praise the name of the Lord. So even if he said, don't mention, mention it, oh. All the men, I'm, I'm using style to tell you, so that you won't fall into trouble. Because she would just be looking at you, don't know. Mention it. If, I, if, they if she tells you, don't mention it one time, mention it seven times. So as human beings, when somebody speaks good of you, you feel elated. How much more of God? How much more of the act of God? 
the act of God. When we begin to share the doings of God, we're exalting him and telling Satan, shame on you. And God is excited to do more. Why God will do more is because he knows you will return back to come and share it. Return back to come and share it. To preserve the blessings. To preserve the blessings. That is the best way to keep God at work in your life consistently. Keep thanking him. Keep appreciating him. It's not every time you bombard God. Bombard God. with Just thank him. You had the testimony of that, our beloved sister. When they told her that her, her daughter fell and she was panicking, according to her testimony, she said on Shiloh ground, the spirit of God ministered to her. What should you do? And suddenly, thank him. And she started thanking God. She, here on Shiloh ground, she started thanking God. And about the same time, God intervened there. And that child came back where they were battling with her before death. That's the power of thanksgiving. Preserve your blessings. Number three, it perfects our blessings. It perfects our blessings. In that same scriptures in Luke chapter 17, if you read down from verses 15 to 19, what happened? As that leper gave thanks unto Jesus, one of them, when he saw that he was he turned back and with a loud voice, loud voice. So when we begin to dance and sing, don't be quiet. Loud voice, do it aggressively. Glorify God. And what happened? He fell down on his feet. Face at his feet. Do it anyhow. Jump, dance. Give God thanks. Giving him thanks. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered him, say, where are the ten? Where are the nine? They are nowhere to be found. Go your way. Your blessings are perfected. And then he became whole. So, Thanksgiving perfect our blessing. It perfects our blessings. Whatever you have seen now is just a tip of the iceberg of the things that God has in stock for you. Just thank him. When we give him quality thanksgiving, he perfects the blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. And number four, to multiply our blessings. Nothing multiplies our blessings like thanksgiving. John chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. When Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes. If, if a meal that was made for a small child now turned to a meal for thousands and then they still have let, they, they still had leftovers. Praise the name of the Lord. Five loaves and two fishes. He gave thanks and then he began to multiply. Multiply so much so that everybody had enough. Thanksgiving brings about multiplication. Multiplication. That was the secret the early disciples were using in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. They were giving thanks and praising God and God was adding to them. They were adding to them daily such as should be saved. A lifestyle of thanksgiving brings daily addition and multiplications. So live it as a lifestyle. Don't wait until, you know, once in a while. Let it be your lifestyle and every day you'll be experiencing daily increases, progress in your life. Let it be your lifestyle. Some people have so much complain and complain and complain and you see you, any sentence of thanksgiving is far from them. Far from them. Because they, they, they have used to, they are used to complaining, grumbling. They don't have to think again before they say you wake them, even in their dream, you wake them. You know, hello, hello, hello. Wake up, is this? How is today? Bad. It's part of them. They have so much complain and complain that they complain about everything, 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 everything. Everything. No, there is nothing of thanksgiving from their mouth. Everything. Everything. They complain, complain. Even when they complain of money and somebody removed the money, they say, ah, well, for nothing. If somebody doesn't even have anything now, you know, how can I go to church? I don't have money. I don't have this thing. You know, transport, nothing. How much is your transport? 
He said 2,000. And they gave you him 5,000. And after they gave him 5,000, they still ask him, so how are you now? Well, at least one will keep my one man will manage, but you see, this one too can't go to anywhere. The, everything must there is no just one word of thanksgiving first to say, Lord, I thank you for this one. Thank you for life. Thank you. No, everything they must find something to complain. They must find something to complain. And when it becomes a lifestyle, everything about them will be complaining. Complain even when they come to church. From security, they say, say, please, can you park here? No, 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 I can't park there. My car doesn't like plenty sun. Okay, okay. Go. go. Praise the name of the Lord. They call me, usher, I say, please come here. We are sitting there. I'm not sitting there. The last time I sat there, rainwater touched me. I'm not sitting there. And so, he says, okay, where do you want to sit? He says, no, you can't sit there. I said, that's where I want to sit. It's okay. I beg. We we'll stay there. They sit there. They say everybody shall we rise up on our feet. To rise is a problem. That's how they will be sending us to rise up, to rise up. Can't we even sit for 30 minutes? What is the problem? Ah. If you don't rise now, they will say you are a devil. <laughs> he rises up. They say, everybody, can we give him a shout? Is it because I rise up now? That's what I'm saying. Praise the name of God. So it has become their lifestyle. The same way, make thanksgiving your lifestyle. Make thanksgiving your lifestyle. And then you will see yourself increasing every day. It becomes your language. It becomes, it takes over everything. Say, how are you today? Well, today is a great day. We thank God for life. How are your children? They are doing wonderfully well. God is just good unto us. How is your job? God is good. He said, but I hear that they are retrenching people. In your place of work, that we are even still working now is the glory of God. God who kept us will keep us. We thank God. You will always have something positive to stay. And it is in those things that God makes sure that nothing touches you. Nothing touches you. Because you are declaring his glory all the time. God says, yeah, if I let them to take that job, they will ask many questions. So even when there, was, there is nothing to do again, we are supposed to let everybody go, but we can't let you go. Can't let you go. So we just find something to do for you. you know, that's how it works. Thanksgiving will always multiply the blessings in our lives. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verses 19 to 21. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, the voice of them that make merry. I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. I will multiply them. When I hear thanksgiving from them out, somebody is about to cross over to another level right now. If that is you, give him a loud shout. It's not just enough to give him thanks. We must do it quickly. Quickly. Delay thanksgiving is disobedience. Quickly. Quickly. To really show that you, you, you appreciate what God has done. Quickly. In Jeremiah chapter 13 and verses 15 to 17. Hear ye and give here. Be not proud. To delay thanksgiving make, makes you proud. That is you are not even sure who did it. For the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he causes darkness. Before your feet stumble upon the dark mountain. And while you look for light, it turns into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Say, God forbid. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. And my eye shall weep so and run down with tears because the lost flock is carried away captive. Verse 18. Praise the name of the Lord. So we must do it quickly before God changes his mind. Quickly, can you imagine? You did something good to somebody. And he waited and waited and waited until after two months before he comes to say thank you. You two know that that thank you is come, not coming from his heart. It's an afterthought. In fact, when he comes to you for thank you, you know he's looking for another one. He's pressed again. The one you gave him last, he's finished it. Praise the name of the Lord. He's finished it. Quick! But when it is quick, then you know that this one really, really appreciate. That's why we have returned quickly to give God his glory, to give him back his glory. Because every good thing that happens, it is not man, but him alone. And I know you are ready to give him thanks. And do you know what? In the midst of dancing and singing and giving him thanks, God will be perfecting somebody's miracle. 
those things that you have asked for that you have not yet seen it, God will make sure it is done in the name of Jesus. Because some people will be there and I say, to my own has not come. What am I thanking him? Thank him. And it will see the speedy release of it in the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Every Jesus. Every blessing that has been released upon you in Shiloh 2020 is preserved in the name of Jesus. It's perfected in the name of Jesus. It's multiplied in the name of Jesus. Every door that God has opened for you in Shiloh 2020, because you have returned back in Thanksgiving, it shall be wide open in the name of Jesus. It shall be left open in the name of Jesus. Every healing and deliverances that God has given in Shiloh 2020 forever, it shall not be reversed in the name of Jesus. For whatsoever the Lord doeth shall be forever. That favor God has released for you shall be forever. That healing is forever. That breakthrough is forever. In the name of Jesus. And everyone, by faith, that is still expecting their miracle. Because you have thanked him for it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Because everything God spoke to his servant Bishop Elebo has come to pass. Everything that God has spoken unto you. It shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Father, we have given you thanks. Perfect all our blessings. Perfect all our blessings. Perfect all our blessings. You have seen this year's Thanksgiving Shiloh. As the Lord live it, you will be alive to see 2021 Thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus. No accident is permitted in the name of Jesus. No death is permitted in the name of Jesus. You will see the end of this year and beyond. In the name of Jesus, it shall be harvest of your turn around testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my year of breaking limit. Then what I have not seen or hear huh, shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations.